Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Yankee Stadium. Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, September 9th, and the Yankees are kicking off a three-game set with the Kansas City Royals tonight. We're going to see Bobby Witt Jr., one of the top MVP finalists, although he's probably going to finish second to Aaron Judge. Although Aaron Judge needs to get going. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a big series because the Yankees have not been playing great. They scored three runs against the Cubs on Friday. They scored two runs on Saturday and one run yesterday. So six runs in three games. The offense has got to turn it back on. And hopefully coming home and playing in the Bronx and being comfortable will be just the ticket. But uh, this should be an interesting series. The Royals are no slouch. They've got Brady Singer going tonight. He's got a 3.35 ERA. The Royals are 79-65 and 65 this season. They're four games back in the loss column from the Yankees uh, in terms of the American League standing. So they, they're they competing to try and get the best record in the American League. They've had a nice season. They were aggressive this winter, and that's that shows you what being aggressive and adding to your team during the winter can do. Yankees added Juan Soto and, and not a whole lot else. But uh, should be an interesting series. I'm looking forward to it. We got Carlos Rodon on the mound tonight. He's 14 and 9 with a 4.19 ERA on the season. And when I think about Carlos Rodon and I think about him pitching in the playoffs, I get nervous. I, I I'm not gonna lie to you. I get nervous. He's either gonna implode or he's gonna pitch really well, right? He, you know, if something goes wrong. You can see things spiraling out of control, him barking at the umpires, him giving up three home runs in a row, that type of stuff. But you can also see him feeding off of the crowd and just completely dominating. So it'll be interesting to see what Carlos Rodon does in the postseason. Look, uh, I think every single one of us would have signed up for 15 or 16 wins from Carlos Rodon, maybe 17 if he pitches well down the stretch here. The ERA is a little bit higher than we want. Uh, That has been hurt by a couple of really, really bad first innings. There's been a couple of times this year where he's gotten absolutely mauled in the first inning. And it seems like he settles down once he gets his his pitch mix working. So we'll see how it shakes out tonight. I'm feeling good about it. Uh, I like the way he threw the ball the last few times out. So uh, he has not had a lot of luck. He deserved the belt last time. But Clay Holmes kind of flushed that one down the toilet. Uh, And then we've got Aaron Judge, who is homerless in 12 straight games. That is a career high. He has not homered since he was on that Paw Patrol show. So I don't know if there's a connection there. Probably not. But Aaron Judge needs to get it going. We need him down the stretch. I love Aaron Judge as much as any fan can love Aaron Judge. Uh, But let's be honest. He's kind of disappeared during some of these most crucial games. So this is a chance for him to turn it around and really make a statement in his MVP uh, bona fides uh, as he takes on you know, Bobby Witt and the Royals. This series could go a little bit towards determining who wins the MVP. If Bobby Witt has a big series and the Royals sweep the Yankees, that's going to stick in voters' minds because there's that recency bias. It's right here at the end of the season. So uh, we're going to take a few of your voicemails, uh, and then I will be back after the game to go over everything that went down and hopefully talk about a great start from Carlos Rodon and maybe a couple of long balls from Mr. Aaron Judge. Let's get to your voicemails. I live in New York City. I cannot believe you had the balls to do it. Uh, I see Glaber's been knocking the crap out of the ball as soon as he moved to leadoff role and he really hasn't been hitting all year so he's he's finally hitting we need more people on the team to hit besides just uh judge and soto so it's been uh, it's been nice jazz has been a nice uh fit but the problem and the question really comes to glaber's defense is just awful he's i think it was like 16 or 17 something insane amount of errors that he has now um they're costing uh, our pitchers more p- pitches, uh, more stressful innings, costing the teams runs, wins. Um, what are we going to do here when John Birdie comes back? It, it seems like it's a wild little dilemma. You want to 
keep Glaber hitting, but his defense just cannot play. It just cannot play. I wanted to get your take and somebody else's opinion on this. All right, man, see ya. Well, it's good that Glaber Torres is hitting, like you said, but if the Yankees were going to do something about his defense, they would have done it by now. It's just awful. 17 errors, and yesterday was a routine ground ball, and he tried to turn the double play before he got the ball. He was trying to position himself to where he could backhand the ball, which was unnecessary, and instead of you know, fielding it like a normal ground ball and then doing a quick pivot to fire to second base, he tried to cheat a little bit. He tried to get the pivot started before he fielded the ball, and then it bounced higher than he thought, and it hit him right in the kisser. As far as John Birdie goes, I can't see the Yankees putting him at second base over Gleyber Torres. He hasn't played much this season. He's more naturally a third baseman, though he can play some second base. He's been playing some outfield in the minor leagues, which goes to this thing where the Yankees are always just playing guys out of position, even Jazz Chisholm. Uh, I, I like what he's shown us at third base. He's made a few errors, but I like what he's shown us over there. But he's not a third baseman. Like he, He's been a second baseman and a center fielder throughout his career. So the Yankees are always kind of tweaking with where guys are playing on the infield or you know on the, on the diamond in general, putting guys in the outfield. Uh, Oswaldo Cabrera played the outfield a little bit when he first came up, despite being an infielder in the minor leagues. I don't know how John Birdie's going to factor in. That's a really good question. I think he's going to be back this week, and and I think they're going to try and get him him some at bats to see what he can do because, you know, he's been a contact hitter in the past. I, I liked what we saw from him uh, before he got hurt, but he's had some leg issues. So you just want to keep him healthy uh, and see if he can, you know, provide you some base running ability. But I'm not sure where you're going to get him at bats. Maybe in left field, but that's going to tick people off because you won't sit. Verdugo for the Martian, your top prospect, but you'll sit him for Birdie. You know, maybe Birdie should play second base a little bit late in the game, and then you have that speed element. But again, we don't know how the Yankees plan to use him, and um, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. But appreciate the call. Hey, Derek, it's a save situation. You know, back in the day, I used to really trust Cashman and making some good trades and making some quality roster moves. I'm not sure at what point that I absolutely don't trust them, but I certainly don't trust them now. It's probably been the past three or four years. This is the biggest reason why right now. Let's say Soto does leave. Dominguez should be called out because he is the future. And I want a young player like that to learn from Soto how he conducts his business consistently every single day. And I think that's the biggest prime that Cashman's committed, and I believe it's worth one year of control. I want the Mingas, I want the Yankees to give their kids the best, best education or whatever you want to call it, experience to succeed, and they're not doing it. They're doing exactly the opposite, and I'm very frustrated with Cashman and the way this organization is treating prospects. Well, I appreciate the call, and I agree with the sentiment. The Yankees don't treat their prospects very well. Now, I get it. You went out and you traded for Verdugo, and you know he's a friend of Aaron Judge, and he's in his contract season, so it's you know not the best for his future if you you know set him down and and call up a kid. But you have to do what's best for the team and for the organization, not only in the short term but in the long term. We saw a little bit of Dominguez and Soto basically playing together and trying to form a bond during spring training. And it was never a chance that Dominguez would make the team out of spring training because, you know, he was coming back from that elbow injury. But I was really looking forward to, as you said, watching Dominguez learn from Soto at the top of the lineup over the final several weeks of the season. And it doesn't appear like that's going to happen. And Dominguez continues to tear the cover off the ball in AAA. I don't have any stats in front of me to back this up at the moment, but I'm sure they're out there. But the Yankees have got to be one of the worst at handling prospects in baseball. Other organizations let their prospects play. They let their prospects develop. Their prospects take leaps forward and become really quality major league players. Yankees prospects, a lot of times they'll come up and they'll hit a bunch of home runs right away and then they'll fizzle 
or something like that. You know, look at uh, even Ben Rice. You know, he came up and he was tearing the cover off the ball, and then he couldn't make the adjustment, and he was hitting 180 when he got sent down. Uh, the Yankees got to work on being better at managing their prospects. Quick word from our sponsor, uh, and then I'll be back with more of your voicemails. Congestion from sinuses, allergies, or a cold can be all-consuming. That includes snoring for me. But Scotty, I found some relief from Navage Nasal Care. You've got to try this. Navage makes breathing easy, easier. My Navage unit is a game changer for clearing my congestion fast. Yeah, Kratz, Navage uses that smooth saline flow and nasal suction to clear those nasal passages. It works for me, Scotty. I've noticed a huge difference since I started using Navaj. I'm breathing better and the whole family is pumped that I've got the snoring under control. We want to help you get relief from your congestion too. Our listeners can order a convenient Navaj starter pack, including a nose cleaner with batteries included and 30 original salt pods. Everything you need to get started. Plus, get a cleaning kit as a free gift with your order, but only going to our exclusive URL, navaj.com slash foul, and using our promo code foul. Again, to order your Navaj free cleaning kit and for full product details go to navage.com slash foul that's promo code foul at navage.com slash foul hey derek this is bob great show um a couple thoughts pretty happy that the pitching might be coming around finally and some of the moves they've made uh with the pitching staff uh hitting that's another question um uh, don't understand why judge doesn't fly in his hitting instructor to help him for a couple days but uh, you know, I'm sure he'll come around too. Uh, I think Volpe will be okay. He's improved this year. He'll probably improve again next year. Uh, I think we just got to be patient with him. What do you think? I think yesterday's discussion about Volpe kind of gave some people the wrong impression that I don't want him to play. I want Volpe to play. I think he's a great defender. I think there's immense value in that. He's got a war of about three, so he's an above average player in the major leagues. He has improved on his batting average, you know, about 40 points this year, which is not easy to do. But he's still striking out and flailing too much. I just don't know if he's ever going to become that stud offensive player that we had hoped for. He might just end up being a bottom third of the lineup kind of guy with a little bit of speed and really good defense. And there's not a lot wrong with that. Uh, he didn't have a lot of time in the minor leagues. He kind of blazed through the minor leagues and... So he's kind of learning at the big league level. I would love to see him take another huge step forward next year, but I'm not going to count on it. I'm not going to put my eggs in that basket. Right now, you got to think of him as a 7, 8, or 9 hitter. Hope that he can use his legs a little bit, pick up the occasional extra base hit, hit the occasional home run, and make the plays on defense. But uh, I, I think any illusions that we have about him being an all-star or an MVP candidate like we had when he was a prospect are quickly slipping away. Now, he might take another huge step forward, but I'm not going to count on it. If we get the player that he was for the first two months of the season, that's an extraordinary player, but he just hasn't shown the ability to maintain it over the course of a full season yet. Hey, Derek, a long-time listener here. Been watching your videos since 2020, all the way back when you started. And it was the early days of NYY recaps. So congrats on your new channel rebrand for Pinstrap Territory. The question I wanted to ask today is regarding something that you were talking about in the post-game show last night, regarding who would be coming back of these free agents that are leaving, regarding Tommy Canely and Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo is a great glove-first first baseman. Is that worthy of the Yankees bringing him back in their mind because of the middle of defense. And for Canely, he's had a great year. Would it be worth bringing him back on a one- or two-year deal, and would he take that? Let's start with Tommy Canely. I think he would come back on a one- or two-year deal, probably one year with an option. Uh, it's worth it, I think, for a lot of players to just stay put and not have to move in the offseason, not to have to uproot their family. He's comfortable in New York, and I think you can get him at a – you know, similar price to what you got this year. He's not going to want a big raise or anything like that. Might get a small raise, but I think Tommy Canely could come back. As far as Anthony Rizzo, his defense has been vastly overrated. He struggled a lot defensively this year before he went down with that injury. He's been a little bit better since he's come back. But offensively, he is not worth the $17 million price tag that it's going to be to bring him back 
with his option. Now, if you're willing to get him to waive his option and you bring him back for like $2 million or something like that to where it's you could just cut him and it really doesn't affect your roster or your payroll at all, then yeah, maybe, because you don't really have another option out there. I still think, think the Yankees should consider, and I know he's a great catcher, putting Austin Wells at first base so that he can get more at-bats. I don't think they're going to do it, and there's also a lot of value for him behind the dish. Pete Alonso's a free agent. If the Yankees miss out on Juan Soto, who could possibly go to the Mets, maybe the Yankees pick up Pete Alonso to play first base. That would be interesting, the two teams basically swapping superstars. But bottom line, when I release this top five Yankees who won't be back next year, you can expect Anthony Rizzo to be on that list. I haven't heard heard you say anything about the new Aliens movie. I just wondered if if it was any good. Also, uh, don't really understand why uh, Gabby can't get a break and put him at third base. So first of all, Alien Romulus, fantastic. Saw it two times with my buddy. Really, really enjoyed it. Oswaldo Cabrera has played really well this year. Like, he's had some really big moments. You see, he's got six belts when we do the belt countdown. So he's been huge when he's been in there, but he hasn't been getting a lot of playing time, which I'm sure has cooled him off a little bit offensively. He had been swinging the bat better. Uh, I agree with you. I think he's done a nice job, but right now the third baseman is Jazz Chisholm. So, I mean, where are you going to play him? Maybe first base a little bit, and maybe he's somebody the Yankees could consider for first base next year. But um, Cabrera's a valuable player because he can play all over the infield. He's a switch hitter, even though he's not so good from the right side. Got a little bit of pop, and he's a fun guy. Uh, We're going to get to the Nostra Derek prediction right now, and then I will be back after the game tonight for those of you who are not watching the Jets game. All right, today's Nostra Derek prediction is that Carlos Rodon will throw a hell of a game. Seven strikeouts tonight for Carlos Rodon, and I think he's going to have a really good outing. He was really good last time out. He seems to be streaky, so let's hope that he can maintain that hot streak and shove tonight against the KC Royals. I'll see you after the game. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and give us a subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. We're also on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media. Join the community. Have some fun. We're here after every game. This is Pinstripe Territory.